hi dear students welcome back to our channel and our app dear students in this video we are going to discuss about the some introduction part of the laws of motion laws of motion in that we are going to discuss about the point object point mass what is force inertia types of inertia momentum newton's first law newton's second law of motion all these topics will be covered in this video that's why you have to watch the video till and without any skip after watching the video if you can feel it is nice just give a like and give a comment then it will can be useful to my channel okay without late we are going to the topic so laws of motion so in that chapter we are having one particular definition point object and point mass in our physics we can use the word point object what is mean by point object to explain the motion of the body we can consider as a point in a plane so for example here it is the one plane so we are showing that initially the point is here next here next here here like that we are showing that means what we are taking it is the point the point maybe it is the anything car he car bus lorry cycle anything rocket like that so to say the exact definition point object is nothing but the object which can covers the more distance or distance more than its size in particular time that should be taken as the point object the object which can covers the distance in particular time that should be more than its size then that should be called as the point object and now here what is mean by point mass in general point mass term can be used to solve the problems in our physics point mass means it is a dimensionless zero dimensions the mass which has zero dimensions that should be taken as the point mass it is a clear difference between the point object and point mass now coming to the point what is force what is mean by force the physical quantity which can changes or tries to change the position of the object that should be called as force we are pushing the body or we are pulling the object pushing and pulling also considered as the force during the pushing and pulling we have to observe is there any change in the position of the object not or not for example one wall is there i am pushing the wall but there is no change in its displacement it means that it is not a force it is a force it is tries to change the position of the object there is one small object is there simply we are picked up and we can throw like that then also it is force so we will discuss the about the force clearly in the next video here generally the force can be here can be divided into two types here first one is the field forces or distant forces distant forces and next one is the contact force contact force force is the what it is simply changes the position of the object or tries to change the position of the object is very clear that force can be divided into two types distance forces and contact forces distance forces for example them what we have gravitational force gravitational force and next one is the electrostatic force what is electrostatic force and third one is the nuclear forces and fourth one is the weak forces weak forces all the are example for the field or distance forces why because you can take the for example this is the first body having some mass m1 and this is the having some mass m2 then obviously there is some gravitational force is acting between them 
according to the universal law of gravitation what we can write f is proportional to m1 m2 by r square so here these two bodies are not in physical contact even though they are not in physical contact some force is acting between them that type of forces are called as the field forces or distant forces even though the objects are maintained some distance they are having some distance of separation even though they have distance of separation then also some force is acting that should be what we call field force or distance force that's why gravitational force is the one of the example for that and even though you can take the dipole or anything water maybe two charges are there plus q plus q it is there then there is some repulsive forces acting between them electrostatic force the force which is acting between the two stationary charges should be called as the electrostatic force that's why here two charges may be separated by some distance then also here some force is acting and similarly here nuclear forces weak forces all these are the example for what field or descent forces and next thing is here contact force so in that frictional force is the best one to understand the contact force frictional force and next one is the normal force or normal reaction normal reaction and third one is the tension what is tension so here when any object is stationary on a surface then there is some resultant upward forces acting between them that should be what we call here normal force or normal reaction and that should be balanced by some what we know some weight it is there clear and if there is if the body is in motion if the body is in motion or if the body is in a dress there is some frictional forces acting between them clear this is a frictional force and this is a normal reaction how these two are these two are perpendicular to each other then the resultant of these should be here notice that is the word f clear then what right here simply f is equal f square is equal to what n square plus small f square we can write and f is equal to we can write as n square plus f square here n is the normal reaction and f is the frictional force and capital f is the resultant of those two so that's why here normal force normal reaction both should be taken as the example for what contact forces and if you can take a body is suspended a body is suspended then also some force is acting in upward that should be called as is tension tension force is there so we will discuss the types of tension forces in coming videos okay and next thing this is simply about the what is force and next thing here what is mean by inertia and which is the measurement of inertia first thing is what what is mean by inertia look here <coughs> inertia what is inertia the tendency of the body to continue its in state its state that should be what it is called as the inertia the tendency of the body wants to continue its same state of either it is rest or uniform or state of uniform motion the tendency of the body to continue its state that should be called as inertia or we can define like this also the opposition shown by the body to change its state that should be called as inertia clear so inertia has no particular units but inertia can be used by using some mass mass is the measurement of inertia if any body has more mass that should be considered more inertia and the body which has less mass or low mass that should be considered of less inertia that's why here the units of mass can be considered as the mass units of inertia the units of mass can be considered as the units of inertia so that's why here simply what is inertia means what the opposition shown by the body to change its state that should be called as inertia and dear students the inertia can be divided into three types one is the inertia of rest 
and second one is the inertia of motion and third one is the inertia of direction this is the measurement of inertia so let's discuss for example one body is at rest and one body is in motion clear one body is at rest and one body is in motion clear so if among these two which is having more inertia in that case also we will consider mass as the measurement clear that's why even though it is in rest position or it is in state of motion but we will consider only mass to explain the inertia clear so first thing is we will discuss about the some examples regarding the inertia of rest so first thing is here there is one bus it is there and one passenger is simply stand stand in the bus or sat in the seats so he don't know when the driver enter enter into the bus and the bus is suddenly started when the bus is suddenly started the passenger may gets backward jerk or fall backward why he was went backward because when the bus is started his legs or his feet is in contact with the bottom of the bus then the force what it is applied by the engine the should be reaches the his legs only it is not transmitted to the entire body that's why the legs only comes into the motion and the remaining body wants to in the same state of rest that's why it can fall down to the backward that is also application of inertia of rest and second example so here we are taking some horse rider when the horse is suddenly starts his motion when the horse is suddenly started its motion then also rider gets fall down to the back side because of inertia of rest only and third example here for example we are taking one glass window glass window panel is there when a bullet is fired onto the glass window simply it can makes only small hole in that window why because the force applied by the bullet that should be transmitted to the only small portion but when onto the same window glass window we are thrown a ball onto the same window football or anything water maybe then we can observe the cracks of the glass up to so much of place what's the reason why because in this case the ball can cover the more area so here the ball wants to takes the material along with it but major portion that should be we can observe that cracks will be there why because the glass material wants to in same state of rest this is another example and next one fourth example is there what it is carpets door carpets are there if you can take a door carpet and you can beat it with a stick then what do you observe dust particles will falls down only while we are beating that one the carpet will move but dust particles will be falls down at the position only this is also nothing but application of inertia of rest so these are the examples for the inertia of rest and you can take one more also it is there for example in our lower classes you may learn for example here it is a one glass it is there and that we kept some cardboard again and that you can keep some coin once you can take, remove the cardboard very fastly and gently then the coin will be falls onto the same beaker because there is no change in state of rest it wants to continued state of rest only it don't want to comes into the motion that's why that should be fall at the same position clear and next here we are taking another example this is the we are suspending the one object like this so i am going to say this is thread a and thread b it is there thread b it is there 
we had suspended the one object with the help of a thread A and we tied some another th thread to the bottom of the object. If we can pull the thread suddenly, then there is no moving of any thread A or object. Simply that should be separated. The thread B can be separated from that one because the remaining entire system wants to in the same state of rest. If you can do the same thing, if you can slowly pull the thread B for a long time, then the entire will be oscillates and it can be moved. So this is a, another example for inertia of motion. So sorry, inertia of rest. What is inertia of rest means simply the body which is in rest position that wants to continue the same state of rest. That is what you have to say inertia of rest. Simply in other words what you have to say the opposition shown by the body to change its state of rest. That should be what we call inertia of rest. Clear. And next thing here we have inertia of motion. What is mean by inertia of motion? Here again the body which is in state of motion that should be want to continue the same state of motion that should be what it is called here inertia of motion. The body which is in state of motion that wants to continue the same state of motion. In other words we can define like this also the opposition shown by the body to change its state of motion that should be also called as inertia of motion. For example here the same example, bus example we are taking what it is bus is suddenly moving bus moving bus is suddenly stopped then the passenger may get forward check all the passengers may give it forward for to the forward why because a moving bus is suddenly applies the brakes and then the, all the passengers may goes to the forward direction fall to the forward direction why because when the bus is in motion and bus is moving certain velocity with the same velocity all the passengers are moving when the brakes suddenly applied then all may gets forward jerk why because of inertia of motion clear second example here for example it is a moving bus some luggage it is there the luggage must be tied with the help of ropes. If ropes are not there, what happened? When the moving bus it is there, we kept some luggage above the bus. And if you are not tied, simply when the driver can apply the brakes, all the luggage should be goes forward and they should be must be fall in forward direction because of inertia of motion. When the bus is in motion, the luggage also it is moving in the same motion. When the bus is suddenly comes to rest, all the luggage will be flies away because of inertia of motion. And next thing here, uh, one more example is there. For example, there is one long jump competition is there. Athletes during the long jump, what we can say here, they will run before going to jump. Why? Because they want to get the more velocity. They want to gain the more velocity and they want to continue the same state of motion. That's why the athletics will be jump before they must be run before going to jump. That's why obviously they will go for more distance, long jump. At the same manner, during the observing cricket matches, the face bowler will go for more distance if he was running while will run the more distance after the only can throws the ball to the batsman then the ball wants to get the some velocity when he was throwing some like this the ball and person must be having same velocity that's why he wants to run with more maximum speed so all these are the examples for inertia of motion and next thing is inertia of direction third one is what inertia of direction so to understand what first thing is what is mean by inertia of direction 
the body which is in motion that should be in particular one direction that wants to be in the same direction for example one bus is moving along a guard road so for example here temple is there and we have so many turns in the guard road clear when the bus is moving along the guard road bus is moving along the guard road if the bus will be takes the right turn suddenly it should be takes the right turn the passengers are must be shifted to the left side to maintain the same direction so this is what example for inertia of direction and you can take a rope and that should be tied to this we are taking some one rope for that one end we are told some some tied stone should be like that anything water maybe we are taking one stone and that should be tied to some rope and we are willing like this and simply you can leave that one that will go for more distance in which direction that should be rotates or uh, while during the rotation the stone should be separate from the rope then that should moves in another direction in which direction that should be goes that should be goes tangentially for example this is the circular path at this path the stone is separate from the thread that should be goes like this when we are moving in this direction clear so all these are the examples for inertia of directions so this is simply about the what is inertia types of inertia and one thing you have to remember inertia was explained by the galileo first who was person explained the over the inertia and next thing here what is momentum linear momentum let's discuss momentum means what here how we can show the momentum p is equals to m into v product of mass and velocity product of the mass and velocity is called momentum the body which has a mass and velocity obviously that can possess the momentum and its si units are the kg meter per second what is kg meter per second and cgs units are the gram centimeter per second clear p is equals to mv simply what you have to say momentum is depend upon the two factors one is the mass one is velocity for example here we are taken just imagine so there are two same type of cars are there two same type of cars are there from the, on the same here we are having same height we are having two cars we are throwing the two stones on to the two cars car a and car b so for the first example here i am going to say we are throw, dropping the 5 kg of the object or stone now we are dropping the some 20 kg object clear here masses are different and they are going to drop or fall from the same height onto the different cars obviously the car b is going to be damaged very much why because it has more mass and velocity is same while we are freely falling both should be having the same velocities here obviously the car is going to be damaged because it has the more momentum more momentum for example uh, one boy is walking crossing the road and another boy is riding some bicycle and he was strikes the person then he may get some little bit injuries if the same person is crossing the road and one lorry is coming and hit the boy then obviously he will fly away because of momentum is more that's why what you have to say momentum is depend upon the mass and velocities for example he is the one boy simply we are keeping a stone a stone of some 100 grams simply we kept over the head of the boy there is no damage under the same head we are dropping with some velocity we are same mass we are striking with some velocity 30 meter per second we are hitting the boy with a stone like this then he may get injuries why because even though we are taking the same mass for the first time we are keeping the stone on the head should be like this and next year we are throwing on the head in this case only damage is more why because 
even though they have same masses but velocity is different when velocity is different momentum also different that's why you have to remember that momentum is depend upon how many factors as and next thing here when for example this is the body a and this is the body b a and b when both are having the same momentum then we can write mv is equals to constant mv is equals to constant and obviously m is proportional to 1 by v or v is proportional to 1 by m how these two are inversely proportional when two bodies have same momentum velocity is depend upon what mass the body which has more mass that consists of s less velocity more mass less velocity less mass more velocity so that is what inversely proportional is there for that simply when p is constant here it is what mass and this is the velocity clear so when p is constant we can write the graph should be like this inversely proportional like this when mass is more sir mass is less velocity is more when mass increases velocity is going to be decreases clear and second situation what is here mass is constant mass is constant then p proportional to v p is proportional to v when velocity is constant then also p is proportional to m here m is constant this is what when m is constant m is constant and this is what velocity is constant p is proportional to v and p is proportional to m simply the nature of graph is what straight line mass momentum and mass velocity when here when it is possible v is constant and here um, once again mass momentum here velocity and momentum here mass is constant so these are the simply about the linear momentum so momentum also covered now we can go for newton's first law to explain the motion of the body newton's gave three equations three laws newton's first law second law third law first one is newton's first law of motion is every body will continue its state of rest or state of uniform motion along a straight line unless it is acted upon by some external force that should be called as the newton's first law of motion every body will continue its state of rest or state of uniform motion until some external force acting on the body that should be what we call newton's first law of motion so it is clearly explains about the force the importance of this one is the it can defines the force for example this is the one object clear as yes. it is at rest position nobody is applying the force that's why then that should be here it is state of rest for example this body is fixed here we are not applied any force that will continue same state of rest if you can pick up and keep a side then only this comes to the motion comes into the motion and one bike is this there it is already at a speed of some for example i am going to say 70 km per hour if you are not applying any force then that should be continued state of motion like that that should be what i have to say every body will continue its state of rest or state of uniform motion until some external force when we applied some brakes then only the body velocity changes and acceleration also changes when the body is at rest position its acceleration is zero when we applied some force then only this comes into the motion then acceleration is changes so here this object will comes into the motion when we applied some force only that's why here this net or external force will decides the motion of the body if external force is zero 
there is no more no moving of the object for example this is the one object is there one boy is pulling this side with some force 10 newtons and this side also 10 newtons another boy then obviously your net force is zero when net force is zero then that should be at same state there is no change in it states so that's why simply here according to the newton's first law we can define the force the external force only cause for the motion of the object internal forces do not affect the motion of the body and here what it is and newton's first law also called as law of inertia what is law of inertia that should be shared by the galileo newton's first law also called as law of inertia okay let's see now newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion the rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force acting on it clear this is the one body clear when we apply some force applied some force then obviously its momentum is changes for example here if it is at rest position that should be comes into the motion with velocity v obviously velocity increases when velocity increases momentum also increases so for example if you can apply the less amount of force in newtons then obviously for example i am going to say 30 meter per second now we are going to apply some 15 newtons then speed increases from 30 to 60 meter per second so when force increases velocity also increases when velocity increases momentum also increases so that's why here but there is no change in its mass you have to remember okay when we are increasing the applied force velocity also increases so for example here next thing is there when moving vehicle is there and we apply some brakes applying brakes also for nothing but force application then velocity is going to be decreased then also momentum changes so this is the newton's second law and that should be mathematically we can show that f is proportional to dp by dt f is proportional to dp by dt the external force and this is the dp means what change in momentum change in momentum here f is equals to we can write k into dp by dt so here what is k some proportionality constant and what is p momentum so here but what we know p is the momentum that is what mass into velocity so you can substitute here f is equals to k of d by dt of m v m is the mass there is no change in the mass during the application of force that's why here you will write k into m into d by dt of v and d by dt of v means what rate of change of velocity so rate of change of velocity is nothing but acceleration that's why we can write f is equals to k into m a f is equals to k into m a for example if you are taking a body of mass 1 kg and on that we applied some force 1 newton and its acceleration should be 1 meter per second square a body of mass 1 kg is there and that how much force you are applying 1 newton then what is the acceleration of the body 1 meter per second square obviously the body will move with 1 meter per second square then in the above equation if you can substitute like here f is equals to kma is there f is 1 newton mass is 1 kg acceleration is 1 meter per second square then obviously what you get k is equals to 1 clear then here simply k value is 1 means what k into m a then f is equals to m a so this is the newton second law equation f is equals to m a in this way we can derive the f is equals to m a and from this one exact one we can give the definition of force f is equals to m a if force is zero m a is zero when force is zero means what m a is zero mass never be zero that's why what you have to say acceleration is zero acceleration is zero 
when it is possible the acceleration is possible only when the body is in rest position or the body is moving in uniform motion got my point for example here f is equal to ma is there if you are not applying any external force then f is zero then zero is equal to ma we are writing when zero is equal to ma means what nothing but here among the either mass will be zero or acceleration will be zero but mass never be zero that's why acceleration is going to be zero then zero is equal to m into we are adding m into zero then what if this means acceleration is zero when it is possible either the body is in rest position or the body is in uniform motion then only it is possible why because acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time when the body is in rest change in velocity is zero when the body is in uniform motion acceleration also zero so this is nothing but what it is again newton's first law of motion if the, there is no net force the body will be in rest or the body will be in uniform motion that's why we can derive the newton's first law and newton's third law from the newton's second law that's why among the three law <coughs> among the these three laws newton's second law is the fundamental law of the laws of motion so <coughs> dear students this is the information about the for this video if you can understand this one like share comment the video and support give me the support i will upload the more videos okay so already one app it is there with our channel name nvinay kumar basics of physics in your mobile you can check the google play store from the google play store you can download the app nvinay kumar basics of physics okay thank you for watching